Hello. Woo. Okay. Yes. Hi, guys. I'm just going to assume that the clock has started. Yes, maybe? Yes, yes. OK, yeah, 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 fantastic. OK, so hi. Uh, welcome to the Fight of Animation. Uh, the, the naming scheme of my talks are ridiculous. Uh, so who am I? Uh, my name is Hjalti Helmason. Weird name, I know. Uh, I, my background is animation, but I've since then like started branching out into other things that I'm really interested in. And uh, I've been very fortunate for the last few years that I've been partaking in a lot of really cool projects. But out of all the different things that I do in animation, I'm, uh, the thing that I'm most excited about usually is doing some kind of a fight scene. And as soon as I was you know, given the opportunity to do a talk here, I wanted to really dive into that and like, start thinking, I started thinking about all the different concepts that touch upon you know, what does it mean to make a fight scene, like the, fight, the choreography, how the camera moves, and all this stuff. And it escalated really badly to the point where Francesco told me, you know you have 20 minutes, right? And that's it. Like, I will not give you anything more. So uh, a compromise was had where uh, we just finished, well, we're currently working on a film. Uh, and I'm going to do a little case study on that. Like, it, it'll hopefully be out in, I don't know, like a month and a half or two months or something. Kind of depends. But uh, you all may recognize that it was kind of labeled as Project Heist. That was a kind of working title for the project. So we do have a name for it now. This is a film, uh, Charge. And there will be just a, it's just a semi-spoiler warning. I'm not spoiling the end of the film, but I'm just acknowledging that there is a fight that happens inside of this film, and the hero will not die. OK, it'll wi he he'll win. OK, so <laughs> anyway, so but just to set up, like, what is that film? And you know, if, if you put yourself into my shoes in making the fight choreography, you have to, you know, just kind of take in some of the premise, which is uh, we have like kind of a dystopian future, an old man with a rusty robot arm, and he breaks into an energy factory to steal a battery. And then, you know, he sets off the alarm, and the, there are security robots, and they're kind of trying to stop him. He has a, a spectacular fight that lasts like a minute or something. It's like uh, it needs to be as short as humanly possible. Um, so let's just take a look at it. Uh, this is the whole thing. I just want to focus on this part. And before you start planning anything out, you're looking you need to look at what I would call your canvas, which is basically the, the constraints of the project. So wh what was the goal of the project? Okay, the goal, okay, the goal is <clears throat> this kind of heightened realism with amazing action, of course. Um, because this is the first time we actually do this kind of art style that is super, well, super realistic, like heightened realism. It's kind of like a, a cinematic from a really cool video game or something. So yeah, it really needs to be about a minute because there's other stuff that happens, uh, like beginning and end and whatnot. So if I start bleeding over it, there will be a producer with a whip behind me, and he'll not be happy, and he'll have an Italian accent. So, <laughs> but, uh, but some of the constraints are also just like, we, we're going to work with what we have in-house. You're not going to get a concept artist. You're not going to get a storyboard artist, nothing like that. Which is, OK, fine. I mean, I've been in this position before, uh, but it's basically just figure it out and do it quickly, because you have a whole team behind you. And so you're on the train. You're laying down the tracks of the train, but the train is moving. Uh, and the kind of unofficial motto of uh, the, the studio is we do what we do with we do what we can with what we have, which is fine. So what does the story need when you start making this stuff? There, so th there is this premise that there's a low-tech hero, and he is going to fight like high-tech robots, right? So uh, he's going to get badly wounded, and he wins. That's it. Like that, that's what the story kind of needs. All right. So what are the elements that I have to work with here? So we got the hero, and he, you know, he has this robotic arm. Maybe you can use that as a weapon. Uh, he infiltrated this place, and he used some low-tech weapons. OK, uh, I can use them maybe for the fight. He's going to go into this factory. Factory maybe has some machinery. And he's going to try to take this battery. And there's going to be some security robots. Maybe they have like these, uh, uh, like not gun, like gun arms, basically. OK, um, let's, yeah, let's ignore some of those, uh, you know, the tools that he's using. Because as you use them to infiltrate the place, you're going kinda, kinda, to be leaving them behind. So uh, we're down to like three objects. And we're, I want to try to incorporate them as much as possible into the actual fight scene. So this is the moment where you sit down and you start like looking at all the elements. And wouldn't it be cool if? And then you just start rambling down a list of like really cool things. Oh, OK, what if like 
his like metal hand gets ripped off, and then like what is it, you know you think it's all over. He does he hasn't he has nothing left, and then he uses the shard that's left, and he stabs the robot in the chest, and he, that's how he wins the fight. And what if a robot gets like blinded by the spray can, and and he starts shooting up the place, so it's like all chaos. And so anyway, I just start going over this entire list, and it's like way longer than this, by the way, and a lot of stupid ideas. Well, what is it if it's an army of robots? Well, okay, let's not <laughs> go crazy. But this does remind you of like a kind of a child playing with toys and trying to, you know, like, whoa. And, but in reality, like, that's what you kind of need to do sometimes. I mean, like, uh, actual directors, real directors do that. But the most important thing is whatever you do, you put it down on a medium. You don't allow it to get stuck in your head because that, whatever that medium is, it doesn't matter what it is, it's something that everybody can look at, everybody can point at. It could be like this in a script format. It could be, you know, like a, a kind of a floor plan sketch. And it could be like really bad storyboard drawings because like your draftsman skills are really bad. But whatever it is, you need to kind of get on board and point at the same thing and critique it. So next up, I started making just like these beat lists. And, you know, and it's just like going over step by step what would happen in the fight if this happened, this, 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 this. And I just started making all these different variations. So these are like four of them, but they <clears throat> went on and on and on. So, uh, but there's a lot of similar things happening, like how he enters and he grabs the battery and the alarm goes off. And like how, for example, in order to get into the close combat, he needs to close the distance, so, so you know, he makes a decision to fight and he blinds one of the robots and something explodes and that like, maybe like a puff of beautiful, colorful clouds, very expensive, and he kind of goes through that in the slow motion and it's gonna be amazing, okay. And, um, and then this, like, had this idea, what if like the, uh, uh, the robot, like uh, the, the hero, you know, being kind of frugal, he manages to push the robot inside of one of the machinery because it's a factory or whatnot, and then the hand gets stuck. Okay, that would be kind of cool because you always want to do like these reversals in a fight scene where, oh, he's winning, oh, he's losing, oh, he's winning, oh, he's losing, you know, kind of a thing. So you, you do that and then, oh no, he actually this thing was detachable all along and he just continues. So you kind of flip it around. Uh, but the end, I always went with that kind of ending where, okay, you know, you think it's all over, he's lost his arm and he just uses it as a stabby stick. Okay, cool. Um, so you go over these and then you start just being really harsh on yourself. Okay, time estimate, I think it's too long. Uh, this raises a couple of questions and it's kind of longish. This one, ah, it only features one robot. That's kind of, it's not ambitious enough. Okay, let's have it be two robots, but I have to, I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit worried now about the timing of it. But how do you estimate the timing and how do you start like figuring out where your camera should be and whatnot? So I start just doodling. So I'm just doodling, okay, this is maybe the layout of the place. I don't know yet, but all I know is that my guy kind of comes in and he finds the battery and he crosses probably the robots because when they wake up, they need to be in the way of the exit. Okay, so they start shooting, he hides behind the thing, he throws the spray can. I, was, I had this whole idea of trying to get that spanner in there also and he throws that before and then as, it was a very convoluted thing. But I, was, I was trying to be clever, I wasn't clever. Um, then, uh, you know, one of them gets blinded, they spray bullets all over the place, it's pure chaos, a uh, battery explodes, and then he uses that to kind of jump over, and he needs to disable the gun. That's the number one thing. If you don't disable the gun, you're dead. So there, there's a bit of back and forth, back and forth, dodging, doing things, putting, you know, oh no, the, the arm is stuck. He's unstuck, shit, I had no idea. And then uh, the hand gets ripped off, stabby stab, and now he walks off. So, yeah, like, when you put it all together, it's like, okay, it's like a, there's a kind of a fight choreography. This is kind of the heat map of where they take place. And you can start thinking about, like, the camera position. Okay, the staging, I want it roughly on that side of the action line. That way, it's, um, it's like the spatial awareness of the place where you have the exit, you have the hero. And in between, visually, it would always be nice to have kind of the robot kind of in between so he can't reach it. And then also for the stabbing, this has to do more with the screen space. Uh, the hero has the left robotic arm, so when he stabs, I want the staging to be towards his left shoulder. That's, this is just for clarity, basically. But okay, uh, what do I do now? Do I storyboard this? I could start storyboarding it, putting it in the edit, that would be great, but my draftsman skills are shit, so I don't know what to do. Like, I can kind of draw, but I'm, I can't do it fast enough to actually 
you know, uh, because I have a time limit. So what did I do in the past? Well, HNC27, I did do all of this planning, but then I started doing like this experimental mixed media thing. And uh, it, I mean, it kind of worked, but uh, for people in the moment, they got really confused uh, because mixed media is uh, a little bit confusing. So uh, for Sprite Fight, I did something interesting just before I, I did the layout because I had to kind of plan out everything. Um, I just started making my own little rig off kind of a floor plan, and then I animated the whole thing, and I started just animating the camera setup and whatnot, and it got everybody on the same page, and also you could troubleshoot things right away. So I just did that. Why not? But I knew that if I did it, uh, the end result is going to have to be under 60 seconds. There's and preferably way under. So I animated this thing. And so this is like a weird 2D look down of the fight. I also had this idea, what if there are these pack bots that maybe you know, come and grab the, the battery, and he actually snatches it from one of them. And I believe perhaps this includes, no. But yeah, I had this idea that what if, uh, yeah, all of this is happening, I know, crazy. Yeah, that was an amazing slow-mo shot, I know. <laughs> I don't know, you gotta include all of, all of the sexy bits. So the thing is, there is something called cinema time. I'm, this is my own, uh, uh, my own uh, like, word for the concept. I don't know, there's probably a better word for it. But basically, uh, when you put it like this, yes, you can have all the beats happen, and you understand them and whatnot, but they're always gonna be <laughs> actually faster than when you put it in cinema language. So, it's 53 seconds. It's not great, actually. I, I have it under my little budget, but uh, what do you do then? Do you just like, redo the whole thing and start trimming things down? Well, I think I, I have to, I would rather just move on into what I would call previs, but I just, like the guy before me, he does real previs, <laughs> and then this is like some kind of a sketch layout, like how cheaply can you do something that conveys the idea and that's it nothing fancy, you just start making like kind of a mannequin guy and you go for the lowest common denominator or stuff. But while all of this is happening, uh, actual design work is happening. So there's a kind of a symbiotic relationship happening where it goes a little bit back and forth. But moving forward, uh, I set myself some limits because uh, my background is animation and it's very easy for me to escalate things out of control where I just start actually animating stuff. So I put a strict limit that every shot only gets maximum 10 frames, and I'm at only working with images. So I'm just making little stills and the, with the fewest amount of storytelling poses. And then I export that into an edit file, and that's where I'm gonna find out the timing of everything. So it's kind of like this, and, it, and I also just allowed this folder to have this long legacy of everything I exported. That way, I could always find things back, but also um, I looked at it as disposable art, basically. So now we're going to start working with the previs, very fancy word for what is kind of meh. Uh, shot inspired by Indiana Jones, very obvious. There's like a lot of these like cinematography things where I'm totally ripping off other people's ideas. Here we go, uh, two robots coming in. Oh no, and that oh no, very much inspired by Jaws. Um, I do like how I did manage to hook up all the shots so when an action is happening, it always flows into the next one, but wait. Stop. Uh, we are right now 29% over the time budget, and it's actually getting worse. I'm noticing that in the beginning it's not too bad, but it's like escalating. The more shots there are, the more the cinema time starts eating into um, my overall budget time. So let's cut down the fight. These two parts, technically if you took them out, all the, all the other stuff, the cool stuff would still happen. It's just you just limit the scope of the entire fight but I have to do it, I have to do something. So let's not make the hero get shot, I mean, it's just like a ricochet shot or whatever, it's just too complicated. While I'm doing all of this, I'm still doing a lot of experiments. I'm constantly like here, we have the same action, but it's a different camera angle, and I'm just trying more and more and more, and then at some point it's like, okay, this one is probably better, so let's just go with that. And now we're gonna continue from there on out. Okay, explosion. Slow-mo shot, so expensive, amazing. You gotta, dis yeah, you gotta disable that gun. That became like slightly ambiguous the way I did it there. So yeah, I had to figure out a better way of doing that. Okay, we got the gun arm stuck, that's great. 
and now the hero needs to be badly wounded, and that, that actually doesn't look that great. So I have a problem here because that angle, he's kind of walking into the gun arm and the silhouette value, gets, it's, it doesn't look very nice. What if I reversed the axis, or like I, I crossed the axis? So the camera goes on the other side, and that way, when all of this happens, boom. So now I, I managed to cheat it, basically, by crossing the axis during that hit, and this feels way better. Now there's a way clearer silhouette. By solving this, I created a new problem, a spatial problem, that I'm kind of on the wrong side of things. But the thing is, um, if it's robot, hero, door, why doesn't he just walk out the door? I need to make sure that in that moment, the, the new questions like this don't get you know, awoken or whatever. So he needs to be badly wounded, and it needs to happen, like the next part needs to happen quickly enough that we don't start considering these ideas. And also, for the entire spatial thing, uh, there's this broader idea for the whole cinematography is that uh, the house where he lives is on the left side of the screen. And while he's infiltrating the factory, he's going screen right constantly. So when he exits, I'm going to need him to go screen left. We're on the wrong side right now. So the idea is, okay, how do I flip the axis again? Well, maybe when, he gets, when the, the robot gets defeated and he's kind of uh, slumping down, maybe I have like him slumping in, on his knees and then he kind of crosses the line. And then, yeah, hopefully that works. But I'm gonna have to remove one of the robots. I, there's no way around it. So I'm kind of now g making a hybrid between that shorter version and that longer version. So uh, more things, there's like just to create more chaos, have some more insert shots for when all of the crazy stuff is happening. Okay, now all the notes have been addressed. So the guy comes in. And you know, I'll just like put in, while you're watching, I'll put in little tidbits. So um, this like pack robot, it does serve uh, an extra function, which is raising the stakes. So because it gets shot and you see this creature <laughs> get killed. And it's like in, intuitively that raises the stakes, even though it's just a robot. But you gotta work with what you have. You can't have like a random employee who just got shot. And, um, you, we can't model all of that. So expensive, oh my god, that's an amazing shot. Okay, so here, uh, it's, it's, it's all functional, it's all working. You see there that there was, this, there was this problem of, is the gun arm still working or not? And that's like when I took it to the next stage, we had to start addressing that because um, you don't want those kind of questions coming up where, did the gun arm still work or did it not? Okay, here we got the hand ripped off, He's got, well, it's, it's very stabbly, of course, the shape right now. Stabby, stabby, camera goes up, near a victory. Here he cross, he, he's crossing the axis, now he's on screen right. Hero can now exit screen left, and everybody's happy. So, uh, just from that, <laughs> from that, I don't have enough time, please. <laughs> so, I, I still have to address notes. So let's remove that first pack pod. Also, the, the interior of the, of the factory got designed, so there's like these, it's a little bit like these murder holes from Star Wars where it's, uh, so he's not gonna fit there, and also it's a little bit jarring when it happens. I kinda like the idea, but it didn't quite work. Um, when the gun arm is getting destroyed, instead of he's using the wrench as a hook, and he's like ripping it up. Let's, let's flip it so it's actually the mechanical arm that's grabbing it and then he's bashing it. So that way it's just visually more clear. So this is the completed layout. I'm really jumping ahead here, by the way. This is the completed layout. So this is me taking the previous idea and I'm putting it into more of a layout form. At this point, uh, we have some things being designed and rigged and whatnot. And you, you use what you have. Um, I think the face, yeah, the face is not bricked, so he's like, oh no, it's all dead in the face. Um, yeah, we still got that spanner. Ah, that idea just, I, I kept forcing it in there and it just didn't, didn't help out that much. And got very expensive shot. You guys are not noticing it, but with each iteration that you're seeing right now, every shot, 
you know, lengthen just a little bit the overall time. So that's the cinema time because every shot needs to like tell a little story and you need to comprehend it. And when you start adding them up, they kind of start eating away some, a lot of your time budget. And now we have the finale. He looks not sad at all. He's very stoic, it's totally fine. <laughs> and now comes the stabby stab, okay. And that's it. So, yeah, yeah, and it's all happy. So, um, yeah, there's a couple of small things. So as you move into the future, there's like these beats, like, you know, this idea that he put the blow dart gun there to not allow the exit to actually close. And it's like, is it, is it obvious enough? So you have to do some camera work. Is that enough? Okay, maybe the door wiggles a little bit when it, well, let's move, the, the, just tweak the, the, the frames a little bit. And then with sound effects and lighting and everything, that's gonna be great. Um, I am pushing through that spanner, take it away. Uh, gun arm, uh, let's add two more punches in there. Okay, add uh, like an insert shot where he's drilling because this is really the climax. So our hero is like, oh, you know, doing the whole thing. Okay, and now with sound, I, I, I totally forego or, or was foregoing any sound up until this point because it's a whole topic in and of itself. <laughs> And he lives happily ever after. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time. So as you move from one stage to another, you're constantly keep being really mindful that everything that happens in the next step is just trying to improve upon everything and uh, kind of highlight what is already working and make sure that we don't start drifting into some other territory. Uh, and this is basically the kind of workflow that I did. And this, like, this entire workflow is just a big excuse for why I'm too, I lack the confidence to actually do any storyboarding. So it's just me trying to avoid that pain. Okay, anyway, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Woo. Woo.